Welcome back to the PointCarding.com YouTube channel. I'm Eric Gunderson, and today, in coordination with NKA, we're going to walk through how to do a brake bleed on a racing go-kart. For this video, we're going to take a look at how to use a remote brake bleeder system like this TDC brake bleeder, uh, but it's not required to bleed your brakes. However, on systems like this one here on this DR Torque, it is going to make the situation and the process much easier because there is not a lot of fluid in the system so it's easy to introduce new air into the reservoir if you have to keep refilling it and refilling it and refilling it. That's where a remote brake bleeder like this comes in handy for at the track it's going to be a little bit faster and a little bit easier. One of the first things that we're going to do before we even open up our brake system is we're going to make sure that our brake bleeder is ready to adapt to this actual system. In the case of this reservoir it uses an M6 thread pitch, whereas the uh, TDC brake bleeder system comes standard with a M10 thread. So we're going to use the adapter hardware available with this brake bleeder and thread that on and make sure that the tool is ready to insert before we do anything else. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the tools required to do this uh, brake bleed system. So on the DR Torque and really on a lot of racing go-karts, you don't need a whole lot once the system is plumbed, primed, and already has fluid in it to actually do a brake bleed. In this case, we need one uh, five millimeter Allen key to open the reservoir cap on the master cylinder, and one uh, three millimeter Allen key to open the bleed screws on the brake caliper. Some uh, brake systems are going to use an eight millimeter wrench, and they'll have kind of a nut a bleeder system, or you'll have a 10 millimeter equivalent of that. It just depends on the actual system and the actual make of your go-kart. It should be noted on CRG, DR cart, and other CRG derived systems, there is a fibrous gasket underneath this Allen uh, head bolt, and it's very important to take your time when removing this to attempt to not damage it. If you do, air will leak past that gasket, and you'll probably be chasing that air leak in your brake system for quite some time. We put our Allen key in there, we unthread it, let it come all the way out. We can see this system obviously has fluid in it already. And we'll pull it apart and we can see that a little bit of that gasket came with it. So when we go to replace this, that might be something that we need to replace on this system. The very next thing that we're going to do obviously is fill our system with a little bit of additional brake fluid. We do this because what we're trying to do is when we bleed a brake system, remove all excess air and just have fluid in there because a, a non-compressible fluid or only slightly compressible fluid is what we want to utilize in a brake system to press on the brake caliper pucks and therefore push on the brake pads and actuate the brake system. So for that, we're going to use Amsoil's synthetic brake fluid for DOT3, DOT4 systems. This is actually also rated to DOT5 uh, standards as well. But a word of warning for racers out there, you always want to check with your manufacturer on what type of brake fluid you want to use in your system, as most go-karts usually use a, a synthetic-based uh, DOT4 system. Some use a glycol base, some also use a DOT5 or DOT5.1, so it's important to check with your manufacturer based on the recommendations. In the case of a DR Torque like this one, it's a fairly generic brake system, so we're actually going to be using synthetic DOT4. First thing, of course, unscrew the cap, use a small Allen key, poke a hole in the top little gasket, and then um, with making sure that the uh, valve is closed on the remote uh, brake bleeder, we'll open the top cap and we'll pour some DOT4 brake fluid in here. And a word worth noting, as you go to bleed your system, if the first few pumps in this you start seeing cloudiness or you see a dark color to your brake fluid, chances are it actually needs to be flushed. In this case, that might require taking the brake system further apart, flushing the system, cleaning it out, checking your gaskets, maybe replacing any o-rings or components, and then filling it with fresh new fluid. This is very common on used go-karts or go-karts that have been sitting a while, may have gotten dust or contaminants in it. Um, in this case, we're going to assume for now that we don't have that situation. But once we open up the system, we'll be able to find out. Next, we'll take this brake bleeder, put it atop the brake system, and the brake master cylinder, and we'll start to thread it in. Make sure that you don't cross thread this, of course. There is a rubber o-ring on the bottom of this threaded adapter, 
We don't want to really over tighten this. We don't need to go nuclear tight with it, but it is important to compress that gasket so that air and fluid uh, doesn't slip past it and we have a fluid tight system. Once my brake bleeder is in place and inserted into the top of the master cylinder, it's time to go ahead and open up the valve on the actual uh, bleed system and basically uh, fill any remaining areas in the master cylinder with a little bit of excess fluid. To do this, we'll remove the cap or just slightly open it to let a little bit of air cycle through and very gently, you don't want to do this violently, actuate our brake system. As we do, you can see a few air bubbles coming through and what is happening here is air from the system and from the fluid system is cycling through. If I open up the cap a little bit larger and cycle just a little bit more on my brake system, I'm going to feel the resistance in the system start to go away. And now, if you notice, those air bubbles are starting to recede. And that tells me that I've probably gotten the majority of the major air out of my actual system. Well, it's true that you can bleed your brakes on your own. Sometimes it's helpful to have an assistant. By doing this, someone can be at the rear brake caliper or the front and actually bleed the brakes and someone else can actuate the brakes. So again, it's not necessary, but it is often helpful. So the instructions that you wanna give someone else is to uh, do what's called pump up the brakes, meaning that when you close uh, your remote fluid reservoir, you'll have them pump the brakes maybe about two or three times. Hold the brakes all the way down as you would be applying full brakes. You then open your bleed screws and then repeat that process once you close those bleed screws. And you just keep going through that until you start building adequate pressure in the brakes. Most people, after they've driven for a while, they'll be able to have a cart on a cart stand and feel the brake modulation and tell when they've built that proper pressure. So uh, with an assistant, what you can do is go ahead and pump the brakes, please. And hold them down. Now I'll take my Allen and I'm gonna open, I'm gonna listen for air and fluid to come out. Retighten. Go ahead and pump them up again. Break loose your bleed screws. And if you have a completely brand new brake system, something that you've never bled before, you're filling with fluid for time, it's not uncommon to have to repeat this process several times. You can go ahead and release the brakes. Um, but if it's one that you're just topping off or just bleeding, this should only take you a few cycles. If you're having to do more than that, likely you have an air leak somewhere either in the remote uh, brake bleeder tool in the master cylinder, somewhere in your brake lines, or maybe even in the caliper itself. Then you may be looking at replacing seals or possibly replacing some of the hardware either internally or externally on the brake caliper itself. Don't forget to open up the uh, brake bleeder tool to refill your master cylinder every now and again. To do that, simply go like that and then gently cycle the brake lever back and forth to allow air to escape uh, and fluid to refill the master cylinder. Go ahead and let go. Go ahead and close your uh, remote brake bleeder tool and now it'll simulate the uh, master cylinder being closed off and retest the brakes. And once you or another driver, whoever the cart is for, is actually happy with their brakes, you can go ahead and remove the brake bleeder tool, reinstall the uh, reservoir cap on your master cylinder and your brakes are good to go. That's gonna do it for this how-to video on how to bleed the brakes on your performance racing go-kart. For pointkarting.com and the National Karting Alliance, I'm Eric Gunderson, thank you for watching. If you found this content helpful, consider giving this video a like, leave a comment below letting us know if you have any questions about bleeding your brakes, and consider subscribing to our channel for a lot more karting content. Thank you.